Last time on Factorio Demystified, we added automated science to our jumpstart factory. Also unlocked the green logistic science packs and the new steel resource. So moving on from that, we're going to be putting those to good use with advanced material processing. This is our first research in the green era, and it unlocks for us the steel furnace for the price of steel plates and stone bricks. And we will be replacing our stone furnaces with the steel furnaces as we are able. So this stone brick area down here that we've set up is very, very similar, actually identical setup to when we did the iron and the copper smelting. But one difference, the time required in the furnace is the same, but you need two stone for one stone brick as opposed to the one-to-one -one for the iron and copper plates. Then over here in steel, this is a little bit more convoluted and interesting. The iron is a higher tier resource, or the steel is rather. It's not derived directly from an ore or anything we mine, but it's going to come from iron plates that have already been smelted. Consider another option here. We could just simply take another iron column, or we could siphon iron off here and use transport belts and move it somewhere for another steel production area. But this direct insertion method is much more elegant and I think superior. And it works particularly well because there is an exact ratio. One iron furnace can exactly supply what one steel making furnace is going to be requiring because it's five iron to one steel, but also steel takes five times as long in the furnace. This stupid looking transport belt down here is there to make sure we only have one lane covered with the coal, and that's actually well more coal than we're going to need, but we need this coal lane up through the middle so that these furnaces that are making steel can grab from it. Then all of this mass of inserters in the middle is why I have this gap here between the furnaces, because that way we can actually get power into them, wouldn't be able to do it otherwise. And the inserters themselves, this really confused me when I was first learning this. Because these red long-handed inserters, they're pulling steel out from this side, but then over here they're bringing coal in. And then for the yellow we've got the inverse. These are putting steel out onto the belt, but the ones over here are pulling coal in. So you may need to spend a little bit of time looking at this kind of thing before it really clicks. But this is a really effective method and the best one that I'm aware of. So we have our furnaces. We are going to move on to electronics. And this is not going to give us anything. It's a fairly cheap research project, but it's going to unlock some other options that we're going to want soon. As you can see, the expansive tree down here that requires electronics. Now we can get set up with our steel furnaces, begin building them. It's gonna take this assembler six seconds per furnace, so it'll take a bit of time. But if we go ahead and do our comparison here, obviously the stone furnaces are cheaper to build. We can see crafting speed of one and then two pollution a minute and 90 kilowatts of burnable fuel required. The steel furnaces, two crafting speed and four pollution a minute. So twice as fast, but also twice as much pollution. It's not less pollution per item that we get out, but they're still at 90 kilowatts of fuel. So same fuel as the stone furnace. And this is key because it means that since they're working twice as fast for the same amount of fuel, the fuel cost per item is half. So half of the coal required as fuel. And also, that means that we can reduce the amount of electric miners working on coal at any given time, and that's where we're gonna see a gain in our pollution. Electronics are finished. So we'll go ahead and move on to electric energy distribution one. And this is going to give us new power poles. The benefit of this is going to be that, well, one, we don't have to chop down any more trees for the wood that we need for the small electric poles, but also these are just better. The medium electric pole is strong in the area of supply, seven by seven supply area, moderate wire reach of nine, that's the wire reach between the two medium electric poles, the distance it can bridge and still be connected. Then the big electric poles are for your long distance transfer of power, 30 wire reach, but only a four by four supply area, so you don't want this to be plopped down in the middle of some assemblers and inserters and whatnot. It's not gonna be as good in that type of a role. So we'll go ahead and get both of them built. And of course, they both also require steel. And let's grab some of our steel furnaces. This research is gonna take some time, but the nice thing about the steel furnaces, we'll just have them replace these. And we'll just plop these down directly on top. And they'll inherit whatever the other furnace was doing. They're the same size, two by two. 
And so it's a very quick task of simply getting them to work. And all that's very excellent. Now I want to take a look at our evolution numbers here and how much of an impact we might actually see from replacing these stone furnaces with the steel ones. So we have just over 5%, between 5 and 5.5. Five and We've got 61% from time, 39% from pollution. The effect of pollution is rising, but not up to halfway just yet. If we hit P and look at our production screen, very important screen for us to know. This is very similar as we've seen the electric network info screen earlier to survey our power. And like that one, we can you know select various items or deselect them, whether they're going to appear on this graph and then hit the reset filter. Got our production, our consumption. I find for most of these 10 minutes or one hour are the most useful time frames. Then we've got fluids. Okay, that's just steam and water, and we're not really going to care too much about those. They're obviously going to be balanced. Buildings, what are we putting up, taking down? Then pollution. I'll just set this on 10 minutes for the moment. Notice that our mining drills are definitely the largest chunk, and more than half of our pollution by themselves. And we can't reduce yet, we'll be able to later, but we can't reduce yet the amount of pollution coming off each individual mining drill. So the only way we can impact that is simply by using less of them. Probably 25% of our mining drills at this point are for producing coal. So if we can reduce the number of them that need to run by having steel furnaces instead of stone furnaces, that's where we're gonna see that impact. It's not going to be a huge amount. It's more a marginal to moderate impact at this stage. But hey, any reduction is going to help us. Then we've got our boiler and our furnaces. Those are a moderate, you know, pollution producers. And then the assembly machines, not really too much of one at this point. On the consumption side, we have our trees, which are the largest part of pollution absorption. Very happy about that. Tiles absorbing a good amount as well. But this right here is worth noting. Pollution absorbed by damaging trees. And there's four stages of damage they can go through, and then they're killed, and they can't absorb any more pollution. And this will eventually happen to us over time. So that's a bit of a problem. Then we have the spawners. And they're absorbing some, and of course that just means we have to deal with more attacks. That's not good at all either. But at least most of our pollution is still being absorbed in ways that don't hurt us. So that's good to know. Kills. And I'm going to go up to the one hour side here. You can see the scaling up of what we're getting hit by. And this is obviously not good. So we're starting to approach 200 enemies that we've had to kill. Now, if we reach a certain point, we're not nearly there yet. But as the enemy attacks continue to scale up and up and we're sending more and more pollution their way, you can reach a stage where it's actually worse for you to not go out and clear out some of their nests because you're just spending so much effort, so many resources, you know, so much pollution from getting those resources, throwing them into your turrets and your bullets and everything else you're going to hit them with. So again, not there yet, but we'll need to watch out for that and eventually go on the offensive. We're going to fill in the rest of our steel furnaces and there's one more element here that I wanna notice that is gonna benefit us. I'm not gonna do it in these areas so much, but the iron line, we're actually not going to need as many furnaces as we're currently using because we had set out enough stone furnaces to fill half of the belt with iron. And that's what we had set for the amount of drills that we wanted to have operating as well. But since we're doubling the speed of these, we only need half as many. So I can just fill up to six on each side. And then I'll go over here quickly and replace the copper ones. Then here on the iron, we don't even need the rest of this. I can just take down these inserters and I can use them somewhere else instead of building new ones. We can shorten up this line because we won't be needing that anymore. And so it's just nice to have more being done in a smaller space and getting rid of reusing the belts, reusing anything that you really can that you don't need anymore. So when Factorio Demystified returns, we'll be moving on with our energy here. We're going to be hopefully looking at a new source of power that's really going to help us in our pollution efforts. And the advancement of the factory will continue. See you then.